What's going on guys, T2RX6 here, back for another Masterpiece Transformers review, and as you probably have already noticed, we're doing MP Ironhide today, and oh my god, what a perfect little Nissan Venet this guy is. I mean, really, he's just awesome. Uh, you can see a lot of things through the windows here. Uh, part of me wishes that they were blacked out, or at least like blued out or something from the back so you couldn't see everything, but it's not a major disappointment, it's just a little something I would have liked, and uh, this window here is dying for a repro label. Um, just to kind of not be red. I don't know, maybe a black repro label so it looks like it's maybe uh, tinted back there or something. I don't know. Something needs to change with that. But overall, I am super satisfied with this van. And uh, it is Ironhide, you know? Like, that feels real nice. If it's your thing, there is the uh, Diaclone Ironhide face there in uh, vehicle mode. Not my thing, but a nice little nod if it is your thing. Speaking of Diaclone, let's put this to the side. He comes with his sled here, and this sled, uh, if you have the G1 version, has the little things that, well, it's actually the back half of the van, but uh, what would come out, you can kind of see it. They did not They did some molding work on here that they didn't have to do. Uh, you got the sunroof here, and the sunroof here. Uh, this is basically the back part of the van split open, but what they did this time is made it a little tray for all your accessories. It would have been real nice if there was some kind of little flip out uh, treads here. But overall, I really can't complain about this nice little neat place for all the accessories, including the face. Uh, the spare face he comes with does peg into the bottom there. Uh, we'll get to some of these accessories later. Uh, I don't know if we'll show them all off, uh, but we'll talk about them a little later. He also has this little piece here from one of the G1 episodes, uh, and we'll get to that a little later too. So here's Ironhide again, rolls like a champion. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out some other masterpieces here. Uh, there is Red Alert and I think he looks really nicely scaled with them. Uh, let's leave Red Alert here. This is actually MMC Sphinx and I still think that that looks really good. Uh, it's a race car. It is fairly big. And I've seen people do the MP Prime trailer test. Uh, I know he can fit. They show it on the back of the box. So let's do the MP Ultra Magnus trailer test. Uh, not that that ever happened any time, but neither did any of the other ones where they rode in Optimus Prime either, I suppose. And he fits in there just fine, and as you can see, uh, next to your MP10 style truck, it's not bad looking. Um, maybe a little bit big, but then it starts questioning maybe MP uh, Convoy is a little bit small. Did I say Convoy? Man, I'm American and I just used the Japanese name. Anyway, let's move on. So before we go to van mode, one thing I wanted to show is that if you want, you can plug this in up here. Um, it does have that spring-loaded port on the sunroof, so you put it in and it will spring itself back out when you pull it out. Um, I've seen a couple people with problems getting this one in. Works fine for me. No problem there. Um, one other thing you can do, and if you want, on the bottom there's these two spots here, and you can actually put both of his blasters right in there and they clip in solidly uh, to the point that I can't get them out once they're in there by hand I always need to use my little handy dandy uh, Hale Hasbro tool here and uh, pop it out from underneath like that um, if I don't it's never coming out and that is a problem when it comes to the transformation so let's just put this gun aside for now and let's get on to the transformation. Uh, it's very fun. It's not very difficult. Uh, I like it. I think they did a good job. So you start by disconnecting the back half of the truck. And I always pull this out because you see you get a little bit of movement here. And I think that that does let it sit a little higher uh, when you have it like this. That said, these windows still do get in the way and they are our next step. Uh, we just kind of take them, disconnect the little tabs here and rotate these up and you can see if they stay in the way uh, they will hit that piece there so in the process I usually end up kind of rotating them down and out because I don't want to stress out anything in here uh, from here I'll go ahead and just finish this piece here on the shoulder and we might as well just work on the rest of the arm uh, rotate this piece open here and you got this hinge here and it doesn't go the whole way but it clips like one good click there. And uh, you see this little tab here will be for all the little weapon accessories. We'll rotate the hand out, rotate this little panel down, and then this one will close up against it. 
and we got one arm in place and we'll we'll kind of adjust it after and we'll do this the same thing for the next one open this flip this out flip it flip it rotate this down and rotate this up there we go I'll just put it just like this and then bring these up so they're making a V and uh, if I didn't say it on the other side I think I did I just forgot to do it here make sure that the shoulder is clipped in just like that so once you have this V here uh, we're gonna take this and bend this down at about 90 degrees and then the best thing I can tell you to do is pull this piece out um, it's not really a pull it's a hinge but it does have to pull horizontally with respect to iron hide here and you'll see you got this little tiny piece here and what it actually did is flip all the way around and hide in here uh, when it was all tucked in so it can be a little bit of a pain to work with so this part is probably the hardest part of the transformation because you have to get this piece to slot around these windows here and to do that you kind of have to bring it down uh, like this bring the window piece down like so and you'll have it facing straight up and then from there you can kind of have these arms around and bring this like this and then you have to get in from underneath here and kind of bend this piece the the front chest piece down and now you can just kind of close everything up so it looks like that. Uh, it looks like he has two windows right on, stacked on top of each other. And these little shoulder clips can just come in here to kind of give a little extra security to the arms here. And from here we might as well finish the arms. Uh, we just bring them around like this. And there we go. We've got Ironhide in his robot mode. I'm just kidding, but uh, if this was G1, that's probably about where they would have stopped. So let's keep going from here. We're gonna go and split the legs down here. Uh, we'll take these wheels, pop them on out one click, and it's just that hinge here, so you're just rotating it a little. Flip this around and hide it back in there. So flip it out one click, flip it around and back in there. Next, we'll take uh, this panel here it's a little bit of a puzzle. You want to flip this around and then kind of put your hand on that hinge and flip it just like that. And it's going to close up that leg hiding the wheel there. Which I think is, to me, I think this is probably like the the engineering moment of uh, Ironhide here. Uh, which every MP seems to have that like one moment that you're like, oh that was cool. Next you'll take this hinge down here and as it comes around uh, there is a little tab on here. Uh, so I do find this a little bit difficult. I don't understand the tab, uh, but you have to kind of lift the door just a tiny bit to get it over the tab. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, but I'm sure there's a reason it's there. Uh, I'll have to pay more attention to it when I'm in uh, working with him in his robot mode. Next we got to take the legs and just spin them around like this. Um, that's incorrect. What I meant to say was, before you spin them, uh, it just happened kind of when I did it, pull them out first, then spin them around like this. So now we got the leg, take the little bumper, flip it up, because we don't need to scratch up our chrome when we're in robot mode. Take the foot and spin it towards the way the ankle is going to tilt. And we got that. The next piece here is going to be to slide these all the way open just like so and if you did it right you should be able to stand up your iron hide and then the next thing to do here is flip these panels which are the dreaded panels that everybody hates like that and slide them right back on in and then these little tires for my uh, old iron hide's little butt cushion. I guess he probably was prescribed one of those little donuts to sit on from the doctor in his old age. Two of them. Anyway, so we got that. And let's uh, raise the camera here because you can see Ironhide is pretty well done. And he is shaping up to be real tall. 
take this piece up here and it just kind of hinges out and up just like this and there we go we've got Ironhide in his robot mode and I gotta say I like him quite a bit actually uh, I am not a big fan of the way these stick out I do wish that there was a way to fold them in so they were like flush against the top so you just had the the, the downward shape like this like if it was just like that the front of Ironhide I think it would look fantastic but as it stands I don't think it looks terrible um, I don't like that there is a gap here that you can see but I mean what can you do um, yeah it looks like Ironhide and he's actually impressively tall um, let me get I should have pulled these down earlier here is your MP tracks and your MP side swipe here uh, just for a size comparison so you can see he's pretty tall compared to how he was with a car um, here's Bumblebee and uh, you know what I don't have Optimus Prime handy but I've got this knockoff thingy here handy um, just so you can see a, a full size comparison I think he looks pretty good in that cast there so let's run through some articulation on him. His head is on a hinge here, I believe. Or is it a ball joint? It's hard to tell. It's a ball joint. Uh, it looked like a hinge. Um, but you get a good range of motion out of it. Uh, interesting. Oh, you got another hinge here. So you can kind of make Ironhide look down a little bit. Uh, the shoulders here have a nice ratcheted joint here. Uh, it does look a little weird at certain angles, but just don't do that with your Ironhide. Uh, you got this ratchet here which is definitely strange uh, it's one of the ones that is on a spring you can pull it apart there um, but it's not bad um, it's gonna serve its purpose and I don't see it actually breaking down over time the elbow is simply a friction uh, pin right here the wrist you saw is just like a mushroom uh, swivel and then you do have the opening hands here uh, on a pin Coming down to the waist, he does have a waist swivel, uh, but not uh, 360 there. It does only go so far uh, before he seems to lock up. And I'm not sure if it's because of the tires or if it's something else that's getting in the way. Uh, nope. Just seems like they didn't give it a full 360 on there because it just hard stops when it gets there. So I'm not sure why they did that. Personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal though. Uh, when you come down to the waist, um, the legs go out to the side a fair amount, but these little hip skirts here kind of get in the way, and I've seen mods where you can kind of remove them. If you do remove them, you do get quite a bit more range of motion out of them. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but it is something to be aware of. Coming down to the legs, uh, forward and back, once again, Everything that limits this guy in the legs and stuff is all this stuff like well, we could get more rear motion here if the leg wasn't or the wheel wasn't in his way So that's kind of a bummer if that's bothering you. Uh, you do have these little hip skirts which do Flex out of the way so you can get the forward motion. Uh, you do have a knee swivel here and a ratcheted knee joint and right down here you do get the ankle tilt. So overall, a very good range of motion out of this guy. So if you want to flip out his head, they did a nice thing here where he has the mohawk. It's kind of a little like actuator thing. It doesn't go all the way forward, but it does help pop the face off there, uh, which is appreciated. It's a nice little thing that they could do to make it easier to switch the face. And you get this face, uh, which I'm not sure where this face is supposed to be. The only thing I can kind of think of is it looks a lot like the face when he got shot and died in the movie. So I think it might be his death face, but I'm not really sure. But again, we'll push this, and it pops his face right on off of there. And we can put the old iron hide face right back on. For his accessories, of course, you can take the gun, and it goes right into his hand and pegs into the slot back here. Uh, it just does take a little bit of finagling to get the gun in there uh, But once it's in he holds it like a champion Really, I don't really have to say but it's the same thing for this one uh, We're not going to show that off 
Now when it comes to his other accessories, we do open this and put this away. And you can take any one of his other accessories, like his hand here, and just pop it off of here and just plug it right in there and you get his hand. So maybe he's waving the primal while he shoots the Decepticon. Uh, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Um, the one thing I do like about this iron hide, because I've seen G1 so many times and so long ago, I tend to forget a lot of the scenes. And what's really nice is that they've included in the instructions, like there's his laser pistol. You know, there is the G1, this G1 gun. Uh, down here is these hands, which are shooting lava out of them. Uh, we got the sensor with the little bug thingy in there. We got the missile launcher on his back, the jet thruster. So it's so fan service, and the fact that they show the little frames for it uh, are kind of awesome. And with the this these accessories, um, you got the jet pack, and they made the fire, and I kind of wish that they made the little thing that I could peg into the hands to show him like he's shooting out the little liquid there. Uh, I think that would be cool. But here's his liquid launcher. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? So these two accessories, they don't specifically show, but I believe this is from the first episode. Uh, or one of the first, the first three, I should say. The first little series where he's uh, filling something in on the ground. I think it was cement or something like that. Uh, if I recall correct, again, it's been a while. And then here's the other one. I don't know if I remember seeing him with a red one ever. Uh, but I know the little uh, G1 dude came with uh, a little red uh, barrel piece there for his one gun. So maybe that's what, why they made those. I'm not really sure. Um, we're just going to put this hand on so he doesn't look entirely ridiculous, even though he kind of does. Uh, the missile launcher here, I do want to point out that it does look like it's spring-loaded, but it's not. The missile just pegs right in there, and you can peg it into his back, just like so. Give him that little scorpion mode. Uh, that mission, or mission episode where he was looking for the little bug thing. He had his little radar dish popped out of his arm here, and then they tell you to take this and kind of fit that into the window there. And close that up and that recreates that scene. Very fan servicey. And I've never put the jetpack on yet. So let's take this off. And let's see, how do we put this jetpack on? We'll take the fire out of here. There we go. And the little flames peg right into our jetpack here. I love when they do a little translucent plastic effect for fire. Uh, for us. I think that that just looks cool and I assume it just pegs right into the back just like that is what they want us to do. So yeah, uh, oddly enough there's no place to peg in the missile launcher thing when he's flying like that. The picture where he's flying in the show he doesn't have a jetpack. He's just kind of flying so that makes a lot of sense. But this guy has so many cool accessories. Uh, frankly I'm probably only going to use the gun but I love that they included all these and Bonus points for having a jetpack that has translucent flames. I love it. So let's get Ironhide back to his vehicle mode here. We'll start by taking down the front of the, the car here. Uh, we'll fold open these wheels and slide them out and flip them around just like so. Uh, we'll take his legs and just bring them straight back and we'll flip them around. While we have this done, uh, we'll go ahead and fold these on in or I should say slide them on in. And we'll go ahead and put this out. And I realized I forgot to flip this out when he was in robot mode. Um, hopefully that is not too much. I'm sure there's comments already on it. That's just a piece that flips out to easily forgettable. Um, it does make the robot mode look a little nicer. But I'll put them in pictures on Facebook where most of you probably won't see them because you're not subscribed to me on Facebook. Isn't that cool? Anyway, we'll flip, <laughs> we'll flip these feet right back on up flip our chrome bumpers up like this then we will take this piece out of here try to get it out of that hinge flip it around like so realize that we forgot to push these on in the tiny little bit that they go and there we go 
kind of goes like this and everything kind of doesn't line up really perfect until you start getting all these panels put together. So get that, hold this, flip it around, slip it on up, just like so. And you can see everything's starting to hold together a lot more firmly. So do that again over here. There we go, flip it on up, just like that. Take this, rotate it out, and then rotate it back in, out, back in. So you got most of that, we can peg the feet together in the back. So we got that, we'll come up here, unclip the shoulder bits, which is, of course, being stubborn, there we go. Take these, flip them the other way because that's how we need them. Open this on up, flip the hand in, take this, flip it so it's in, open that panel, open this, just like that. Do that again for this side. Uh, we already have the hand folded away from when we were showing accessories, but we still have to do this stuff. There we go, just like that. Now we'll take this piece, flip it on out, take this, pop it up, flip this down, and then kind of get that thing to compress all like this. Bring this around so you've got these windows lining it this way, like so. Pop that down here. And, uh, my front of the van is caught on the top here. You need to make sure that it clears that piece. There we go. So take this, flip it all the way down and around like so. And you can see that things do like to displace out of the way here. But once they're in place, it'll all clip in together. So bring that back down and rotate the arm, like so, and bring this down, and now it's just a matter of kind of massaging every piece to fit back together, and there we go, clip it all in tight, push it all together, and there we go, that is Ironhide back in his vehicle mode, and I hopefully you got most of that on camera, I know. Uh, some of it went off when uh, the camera was still too high because he's so big. So overall, he's a pretty great toy. I like him. Uh, I think he has some small issues. But I'm happy with him and I'm looking forward to Ratchet. So this is T-Tar X6. I'll see you next time.